Now, without further ado, I'm going to matters of national importance. Honorable Milton Muma. Ah, Honorable Nanda is Honorable uh, Sai Mujib. Sorry. <laughs> no, I had seen Honorable Nanda. You are just still standing up. <laughs> I don't know why they sit far apart from each other. <laughs> so, yes, Honorable uh, Semuju. Thank you very much, Honorable um, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the procedural issue I am raising relates to a matter before a court. That matter. I have raised it in this parliament before of serving military officers involving themselves in partisan politics. The time I raised it, Mr. Speaker, seeking your guidance, you had attended the party of General Moz in Rugawa. This weekend, Mr. Speaker, again, both of you, our leaders, we saw you escorting someone who has been accused of committing a crime under the UPDF Act, receiving him, rendering this parliament uh, vulnerable because we can wake up and the speaker, both of them are being someone the either as witness or co-accused because already the matter is before the High Court that a, a military officer is involved in partisan politics. So the procedure issue I'm raising, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I had intended to renew that matter. I am now in a very difficult position with both of you, our leaders involved. Maybe a procedure matter to seek for your guidance. What do we do? Because that matter should have been handled by Parliament. But now both our leaders are also receiving a the military officer when he's committing crimes under the UPDF Act. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, Honorable colleagues, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament this weekend held a Thanksgiving. And uh, in the Thanksgiving, it was for two days. We had the first day at her home with members of Parliament. The second day, at a, uh, in the same district, at a certain venue, again with her voters and members of parliament, but also welcomed other guests who include me. Now, I don't know whether army officers are not allowed to attend Thanksgiving of people. Because what was in okay there, we had a Thanksgiving, and the right one of speaker had, among other guests, some military officers. So I, I don't know whether the law says military officers are even prohibited from attending Thanksgiving. So uh, until I get that clarification, I'll be constrained, Honorable colleague. And I must and I must say we missed you at the party. Yeah. Yeah, your seat was uh, well reserved. So next time join us. We do Thanksgiving for each other. And colleagues, any one of you, if you have. And I don't mind whether you call your party president, whether you call who, as long as it's a thanksgiving for a member of parliament. I will come. Uh, period. Okay? Yeah. So I never, the speaker and the deputy speaker and members of parliament never participated in activities of politics. We participated in activities of thanking God and thanking the people of Kedea for voting uh, their beautiful daughter to parliament of Uganda where they saw her capacity and also made her a speaker of the August. So, uh, Honorable... Mr. Speaker, most of us members of parliament here are actually affiliated to some, to a party. Those who are not affiliated actually are members of the independence. Over the past few weeks, the media has been awash with uh, what has been happening in the FDC bench. And for that reason, some of us are a little bit confused where some of our members lie. Wouldn't it be procedure right 
that actually Honorable Semuju at this moment clarifies to us where, where his affiliation is so that in case we are mobilizing members to vote, we know actually where to go. I would also like to inform him that this is his area. Thank you. Thank you. The owner was coming to bring the FDC, and uh, he's still a member of the FDC, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I'm sure I can give you more clarification in the corridor. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Obua is the chief whip. His duty under the Administration of Parliament Act is attendance. I hear him now assign ministers who are at the same level with him. So the procedure issue I am raising, because in our rules, if he's here as a lead of government business, they should have notified you and you are inviting him accordingly. So did the, Mr. Speaker, did the government write to you, which is the issue I am raising, that today Honorable Obua is the Prime Minister and therefore can even assign other ministers at the same level? Thank you. When you look at uh, the Honorable Obua's government, if we from the angle of on, of only under the administration of Parliament Act, then you'll get it wrong because the appointing authority also appoints him as the minister to work, to do work of the executive, and that's why he has an office at Parliament. But I was also informed officially that he has an office at OPM, so he can handle issues of only Parliament and issues of the executive on the other side. So he has spoken as a minister, and uh, honor I will thank you for exercising your authority. Honor <laughs> Thomas. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I raise on a matter of national importance, uh, cons considering the disaster that befell our people in Chivadinga sub-county, uh, in, uh, which affected five local councils, one. One is the Kasana, another one is Kazo East, another one is Kazo West, Nubuguma, and Nakasagazi. But, Honorable Speaker, these were badly hit by a hailstorm, and their gardens of cassava, sweet potatoes, bananas were badly destroyed. Amongst these, right, Honorable Speaker, even animals and birds died because the hailstorm was really heavy. Right, Honorable Speaker, it is very clear to us, we all know, and the August House, that the previous season did not do well just because of the drought that we experienced, I think, countrywide. Right, Honorable Speaker, their hopes were vested in these crops that had remained. As the season begins, Right, Honorable Speaker, Prayer. they do not have... My prayers are that the Ministry of uh, Disaster, Preparedness, Relief and Refugees comes to our rescue and provides our people with a few relief items uh, to help them go through that small period and also provide them with seeds to help us have uh, what to eat for the meantime as they prepare for the next season. Thank you so much, Ray Tunebo Speaker. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ray Tunebo Prime Minister. Now that you've entered and uh, you already had uh, issues, so let me ask Honorable Hope Grania to use one minute. Oh, then you respond to her. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, allow me to welcome you back from recess. I can see brothers, I can see Semuju, <laughs> and everybody. I'm happy to be with you. I've, I've been watching, that honorable speaker, I've been watching my sister, Grania, on my phone with this technology, which was brought by NRM Gamba. <laughs> but but uh, right, right honorable prime minister, 
you sound and look happier than usual. Oh, what has happened? Where are you coming from? <laughs> that one was speaker. You know, we have been treated to a number of uh, scenarios. Some from FDC, which is almost dying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, na, my brother Nanda and others. So, and we have been doing a number of activities. That's one of the speaker. That one of the speaker, when I was Grania, the area was hit by a storm. The office of the Prime Minister is already on ground to assess. And then we send relief to those people who are affected. Thank you so much. Thank you. Honorable Maureen Osori. From Odamachaku to Lia Custom, that's Narua City. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I want to inform uh, August House that indeed we had con contractors who went down to Arua City and they went to install the high voltage electric poles. But however, they didn't do well in some other areas. They went deeper inside, to, inside people's land and uh, when they went to people's land, people were not given adequate information that where these poles land, you are not supposed to do any economic activity on that land. And you are not supposed to do any construction. Yet in West Nile, most of our lands are customary lands and they are small in size. Now that that information was missing, people are now causing a lot of problems. Which are just uh, in areas, I think it is happening to many of us, including me. And some people in the constituents are saying, no, this will be done in 2025 when we are going into campaigning. You see, he is not allowing it to be connected because he wants to show that he has delivered towards that time. It's uh, really destroying the image of many members of this house. Uh, so we need your intervention, right, Honorable Prime Minister. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the Honorable from Arua City has brought a very pertinent issue. And so I request that you allow me to get in touch with her and together with the Ministry of Energy and other colleagues, the members of Parliament from Arua City, and we handle this matter conclusively. Then the, the, the poles without uh, wires. These poles are almost everywhere in the country. We were told in the cabinet recently that he, some of the members of parliament last time got in touch with Raya and the Raya tried to give polls to members of parliament then and these polls were not catered for in our budget then. But we have agreed with the Ministry of Energy with the money we have got under the just concluded approved loan. We shall have to do that work and conclude it district by district. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, I know this issue is uh, an explosive issue. I urge the Committee on Natural Resources to take it up seriously because uh, you know, it, it, it's a burdening issue and I'm glad right on our Prime Minister it's also burdening you uh, and you've seen it. I hope we give it the serious attention it, desert, it, it deserves. I'm going to ensure that we follow up on it. Speaker, sir, in the last uh, session of this House, the issue on electricity connection came up. And I remember you were the one presiding over when members sought to interrogate the Ministry of Energy, you directed the Minister to bring a comprehensive report detailing all the villages that the project uh, under electricity access scale-up project is going to handle. 
at that time, Mr. Speaker, you had directed the minister to come in about one month. It is now over six months, and the procedural matter I want to raise is whether it would be proper now that this matter has come up and that project is yet to commence, that the minister lays before this House a full report so that all members of Parliament can then determine the equity in the distribution of the connections that have been passed by this House. I thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I remembered, I remembered when, we, when we raised that issue. Uh, let the Minister, right on our Prime Minister, for up then on Wednesday next week, Tuesday next week, let the Minister lay on the table here, and we applaud it on our system for the consumption of all members. Colleagues in the public garden, students of Good Hope Primary School, Naburagara Mengo, they are represented by Honorable Shamim Marenda and Honorable Rogers Mukasa Tarton Gold. Um, right on our Speaker, the Minister of Finance last week, communicated the, the position of the World Bank regarding funding of certain aspects of our budget. And he urged the agency for this parliament to review our budget in line of the actions which have already taken place by the World Bank. Uh, given that background, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Speaker, relating to your guidance on committees to consider having meetings when we are not sitting here. Uh, would it be procedurally right for you in light of the challenges that we are having as a country relating to our budget funding for the Ministry of Finance to meet the Committee of Finance, Budget and National Economy tomorrow so that we address those issues? I submit. Uh, uh, thank you. Now, colleagues, I don't know why you're panicking. I don't know why you're panicking as if the country is uh, eh? it's going to shut down. Is uh, We made a decision here. When we were making that decision, we knew it would have repercussions. Okay? And we are prepared and we are strong about the decision we made as a house. The moment we show any signs of weakness and panic, it means we don't know what we are doing, we don't know what was coming. We knew threats would come, people would try to do what. So please, please, let us be calm. At any time, when the Minister for Finance, or the executive, and I saw the communication of the President, he said they are engaging with the World Bank on this matter. So at any time when the Minister for Finance, or the executive feels they want to do anything with regard to reviewing the budget, they will come back here and they inform us. So I would urge the committees of finance, budget, these meetings, Minister for Finance, come and explain uh, what bank has withdrawn funding, so you must come, you explain, you do what, you're pressing the panic button for nothing. So to me, executive, do your work. Manage foreign relations, manage with the World Bank. Whenever you feel Parliament should come in, you will inform us and we shall come in and we pray our role. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I wish to inform the House that the planning we had, that the meeting we had planned with the committees of National Economy, Finance, and Budget had nothing to do with the current developments with the World Bank. However, it came to our attention that when these days are days of parliament, and we asked the leadership of parliament through the office of the speaker that this activity be postponed to 1st of September, which will be a Friday, and which the leadership of this parliament has complied with, and we are moving along those lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for understanding, Honorable Minister. Uh, colleagues, Honorable uh, Esther, uh, uh, then Honorable Nanda. Good with Aaron. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, as you mentioned, that we are in recess, but still to your office and to you, Right Honorable Speaker, 
Men of us still were caught in between the sectoral committees and the standing committees. We beg for your indulgence once again, right, Honorable Speaker, that let it be clear to our, to our committee chairpersons that, that the days for standing committees are, are clear and the days for sectoral committees are clear. Because many times it 